Matthew chapter 22, and I'm going to begin with verse 35. And it says, Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is likened to it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And this is the word of the Lord. Amen. Let's put our hands together and thank God. Give honor and glory to God's word today. Can we? Amen. So Matthew tells us when Jesus said as Lauren read our text that the greatest commandment is that thou shalt love, everybody say love, love. point to your heart and say love, love, the Lord thy God with all thy, everybody say heart. heart, and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is likened to it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So February is the month where people will ask, in many cases, someone to be their valentine. It is a month where we will probably talk about love, and for sure we will talk about the heart. The children will draw and paint hearts in their kindergarten classes. They will make cards for their mother, I'm sure, and for their friends. And they will put on those cards, will you be my valentine or I love you. It's a time when people express their love and pledge their hearts toward one another. And as I begin to think about this time of the year, I was so much in love with this thought of giving God our heart, giving Jesus our heart. As a matter of fact, February is also the month, and you may want to know this so that you can help out, but it is also the month where the American Heart Association will bring a fresh focus on saving the lives of people that have had heart problems. We have members in our church that have come through devastating times that are now doing well because of their help and because of the help of the Lord. And so if you want to make a donation, they're not paying me anything to do this but you can be a part of helping the American Heart Association. So with all of that just flooding in in the month of February, I thought what greater message could I have given today than the message of giving our hearts to Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So let's talk about the heart today. Let's give God praise and glory because we want to give our heart to Jesus. Amen. Your heart is the center of your life. The heart is so important. Listen to this. It beats, your heart beats 100,000 strokes every 24 hours. It contracts 4,000 times in one hour. All the blood in your body weighs about 25 pounds. And all of that blood will pass through that heart every four minutes. The heart is a very important organ in our body. Without blood, we cannot survive. The Bible even tells us that the life is in the blood and the heart is the muscle that keeps the life flowing in our body. 
But the Bible tells us in so many times, in so many ways, that the heart is more than just an organ, but it is also a symbol and a member of what makes the church grow and thrive and continue to flow as well. So there's spiritual significance loaded through the Bible. And whenever the Pharisees asked Jesus, what was the greatest commandment? What was the greatest of all scriptures? Jesus told them it was this, that we should love the Lord our God with all of our heart. Our hearts collectively is what makes the church the church. Our hearts beating together in unity is what reaches out and makes an impact to souls that are lost. Like the blood that flows through our body, the heart, the heart is the tool, the driving force to keep us alive. It is the seat of emotions. And my question today to you and to everyone that will see this sermon or hear this sermon is, have you given your heart to Jesus? Your life can never be as fruitful and beautiful as when you give your heart to Jesus. I spoke with someone the other day just in casual conversation and um, he uh, asked me, he said, did you have it planned when you were young to do what you're doing today? And I told him, oh no, there's no way I could have planned this life. It was my trust in God and given Jesus my heart and I look back today and see how God is leading me and it's all because I gave him my heart and I didn't hold anything back. And the beautiful thing about God, and you listen to me, you will, you will think of this after I say it with appreciation. The beautiful thing about following the will of God and giving Jesus your heart and saying, of all the things I could do, I could do this and I could do that, but I'm not, I'm gonna trust in God. The beautiful thing is this, that after many years, you're able to look back and you're able to see, oh my goodness, look where the Lord has brought me from. Now how would you have liked to have your life, your entire journey without Jesus leading you at all and him just, uh, you know, not the, the guiding light or the counselor or the wise voice I'm sure that we would all agree that our lives would be miserable. But that's a beautiful thing about serving God. Sometimes in the moment, now listen, because some of you need to hear this. Sometimes in the moment, even though you've given Jesus your heart and you're in the will of God, sometimes in the moment you want to question and you want to say, what in the world is going on? How in the world did I get into this? How is all of this trouble, storms in my life? If I'm in the will of God, why am I going through this? You may question that, but here is what I want you to remember. You just keep following God because five years from now, you'll be able to answer that question. You'll be able to set back, look at the journey, and you'll say, oh my goodness. God, I see. I didn't understand then, but I can look back now and I can say, thank you, God, for leading me and guiding me. That's the beautiful thing about giving Jesus your heart. So just because you give Jesus your heart today does not mean that all the storms are gonna stop and all the problems, and some of them will. Can somebody say amen? We need to just stop there and think about it. Some of them will but some of them won't, but time 
will prove the testimony and how that God has led and guided you. The heart, amen, is where the morals flow. Listen, just like the blood that flows through your heart and your body, the morals flow through your heart. And the heart determines what kind of person you are. Have you ever known a loved one, a friend, and you thought, my goodness, where, why would they do something like this? Where are their morals? It very well could be because they have not allowed their morals to filter through the heart. Not just the physical organ, but the heart of God. Because when we surrender our heart to Jesus, we gain the heart of God. Like the blood, your, not only your morals, but your emotions, just like the blood, flows through the heart, and the heart pumps your emotions through your body. And emotions flow through the heart, and it determines how you will respond to the given situation. And I can tell you, if somebody mean and evil and the devil has sent them with an appointment to attack you, comes your way. That you will respond differently when you have allowed your heart to become the heart of God and your emotions, like the blood, are flowing through that kind of heart. You will operate differently. You will think differently. And I ask you the question, is your heart right with God. I want to read to you a scripture and I think this is just a, a wonderful, amazing, I love it. It's in Joshua 24 verse 23. Joshua 24 verse 23. I love this. Amen. The Bible says, Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. Look at that, incline. Everybody say incline. He said, put away the, the, the false idols and all of the strange gods. And Joshua told them, incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. Another scripture says uh, in Psalms 141 verse 3, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips Incline not my heart to do any evil thing, to practice, practice wicked works with men that work iniquity. That word incline is an important word. Now, how many has a recliner in your house? And it feels good to recline, right? To relax. But this word says to incline, amen. The heart needs to be inclined, amen. It needs to be inclined that it can be, prevent the heart from declining. So a lot of people are lazy and instead of making sure that their heart is inclining every day, and not declining, and they just expect it to be all right, so they recline, and they just relax, and they don't do a lot about it. And, and, and this is what Joshua told the people. He said, be careful, because we've got to make sure that our heart is inclined unto the Lord. Now, that being said, those scriptures is very simple, but yet it's very powerful because it tells us and it shows us that we should not allow our heart to recline toward evil things, but we should re allow our hearts to incline unto the Lord. Here's the thing about the heart. Is the heart, its natural default, its natural default is to decline. That's its natural default. 
You can't stop it. There's nothing you can do to prevent it except for the things that the Word of God teaches us. So it is natural for our heart to decline unless we purposely incline it through prayer and through the Word and through worship and through singing and through rejoicing and through fasting. So when I am not doing those things, my heart will naturally begin to decline. And the word of God says that we need to make sure our heart is not declining, but it's inclining. It's climbing closer and, 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 and better towards the Lord. The longer your heart is declining, it is hardening. It's very important. Now naturally if you go to the doctor and the doctor examines your heart and he says, your heart is hardening. That's not good. Because the muscles in one area of the heart means that the tissue has begun to die and that heart is struggling to pump the blood through those valves, through your veins and arteries. And that's when we begin to see physical symptoms, physical signs. And so if they can, they will put a stent or they will do heart surgery or there have even been people that have had a heart replacement. And I'm here to tell you that God can do all of those things for us in a moment of time when we give him our heart. Is your heart hard? Give it to Jesus. Come on, somebody. Do you know somebody that's been on drugs since, uh, since the beginning of time and they've drank since? Hey, all they need to do is give their heart to Jesus and God can soften and he can fix that heart problem. It's not an alcohol problem. It's a heart problem. Come on, somebody. It's not a drug problem. It's a heart problem. Oh, come on. Let's give God the praise. I feel like preaching a little bit right now. Amen. Some of our problems it's not necessarily the devil it's a heart problem when our heart is inclined I'm here to tell you my goodness I feel the Holy Ghost God will take care of the issues let's give him praise one more time